So welcome, Magnus here, using uh, Peter McKinnon ND filter. And today we're gonna talk about mirrorless cameras taking over and DSLRs being dead. Hence the t-shirt. I don't know if you could see it, but t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, I'm using the Samsung NX1. Basically my first mirrorless camera that I've ever purchased. Back when uh, the idea of ditching a DSLR was starting to catch fire four years ago. A lot of people would say ditching a DSLR didn't make sense. DSLRs were like king over mirrorless cameras, but Sony was already jumping in. Samsung did at the time, and then you had Panasonic. You had everyone jumping in, but the major two, Nikon and Canon, were just slow. They were still pushing their DSLRs. Heck, a year after the NX1, which I'm using right now, came out, you had the 5D Mark IV, a high-end mirrorless camera, come out from Canon. But there hasn't been a follow-up to the 5D, and now we've been seeing more mirrorless cameras take precedent, while DSLR cameras are starting to become few and far between. DSLR cameras, I think, are still important. But why? What's the point of creating a DSLR camera nowadays? Uh, let's talk. Yeah. Makes you wonder how, like, I was just getting in my car. What the heck am I doing walking? Well, totally honest, I had to go grocery shopping. Now I'm done with grocery shopping and I'm back out taking a nice little brisk walk. Talking about cameras. I look weird to people out here too. But it gets noisy around here because cars pass by and, you know, it just gets that way. Hopefully my camera doesn't shake too much, but I'll try to keep it pretty much steady as I walk. <laughs> anyway, maybe I should have put um, image stabilization on, on the camera, but we'll leave it for the way it is. So why hang on to a DSLR? Why hang on to that type of family? Well, DSLRs, at least lately, because they're older models, you can find a lot of DSLRs that really are less expensive. And with a less expensive DSLR, you can get great quality that was super expensive to buy in the past. I'm gonna actually go up those stairs. Figures I would show up next to a highway to get the best look of a highway. Let me go back down a little bit. Looking for a place to actually sit and talk. I almost like slipped. This place is kind of dangerous. I'm under a bridge right now. About to go next to some train tracks. Kind of dangerous. Here comes a train. I'm gonna be on this side. <laughs> Don't want to get hit by a train. <laughs> Lower it down just a little bit. When dealing with mirrorless cameras, though, even for like a cheaper APS-C body, like smaller sensor size, they tend to be more expensive. I saw a couple of Sony cameras that were smaller sensor size and really small bodies, close to a thousand dollars. That in itself is to me way too much. When you can get probably a higher quality DSLR for a similar price. Heck, you could even break into the full frame market within a thousand dollars nowadays, especially if you could pick up a used Canon 6D for example, which was my first full frame DSLR. And then from there I jumped to the NX1 which was my first mirrorless camera, which is what I'm using now. So what is it about mirrorless that makes them so nice? Well, years ago, mirrorless cameras basically did not have a refresh rate that you needed in order to take, you know, live view pictures without there being some sort of lag. Also, mirrorless cameras were a lot slower. Mirrorless cameras drained. I mean, those batteries lasted about five, 10 minutes. 
on most bodies before they just collapsed on you. But it just wasn't worth the investment. You, you couldn't get the same quality that you could off of DSLRs. And that has changed. Even with the camera that I have, that I'm using right now, the NX1, this camera, although battery life, because the batteries deteriorate over time, this camera's visual quality is stunning. The EVF through the viewfinder is magnificent. It's just basically was good enough to pretty much stand side by side my full frame DSLR camera and I'd be like, hey, most times I'm gonna choose this. Plus it had full usage of the full frame and the APS-C for 4K and it would downsample 6K to 4K. I mean, the video, as you could probably see right now, is pretty sharp. Granted, it had a couple of drawbacks too, but this is back in 2015. Right now we're in 2019. I'm still loving this mirrorless camera. In fact, after the Samsung, I bought the Panasonic GH5, and now I own the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Those are three mirrorless cameras. Ever since the 5D, I have not looked back at DSLRs. The main reason is the technology that's packed into mirrorless cameras nowadays from these manufacturers is really what's getting me. I had been waiting for Canon to release a full frame mirrorless camera and then when they released the EOS R which was basically a 5D Mark IV but mirrorless with some less features in, in some degrees I was just kind of like no thanks I've got my Canon 5D. Now the DSLRs are great but Let's start taking it back. I look kind of weird. I was waiting for the train to show up. The choice between DSLR and mirrorless cameras goes to the fact of your budget and what you want to do in your videos. I think mirrorless is the future, so if you're not into any sort of camera line, whether it's mirrorless or, or DSLR, get yourself a mirrorless camera. Mirrorless cameras in itself are a kind of the way of future. If you're concerned about um, if you're concerned about the fact that lenses are limited, a lot of mirrorless cameras have adapters, so you can plug um, like DSLR lenses into them because of the flange distance, increased like distance between the sensor and the back of the lens. That helps you pretty much work with those type of lenses, and the options are pretty much endless when it comes to mirrorless and the upgradability and the features that you get in such a small body where DSLRs, they may not be dead, but they're on life support. That's the way I see it. I'm trying to climb down here. Oh, dangerous. Oh, this is definitely more dangerous than I'd recommend going. <laughs> I made it. All right. So, Mirrorless cameras themselves have advantages in the sense of you can adapt older lenses, DSLR lenses, to mirrorless cameras and they actually work. And smaller bodies, battery life is something of the past. Battery life is actually lasting longer with modern bodies. Um, so you have a wide range of different selections. You could adapt speed boosters to make smaller sensors act like bigger sensors in any APS-C sized mirrorless camera. So you could get, for example, uh, use a micro four thirds camera, put a Metabone speed booster, and it'll act like almost full frame, if not APS-C size, in a small body, which is great. Mirrorless cameras also have the ability to show you what your exposure is gonna be like right there on the screen. Now you can do that with the DSLR using the back screen but if it's bright out like it is today you won't always easily be able to do that so that's an advantage that they've got there anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and as always like share and you can make my day if you subscribe today this is magnus and i'm out see you later Whoa! oh man it's sunny but it's cold i'm already missing the summer like, this was one of those summers where I almost stayed locked indoors most of the time. And then when I finally get out, I have to wear a jacket.